saw the research, thought really, really cool idea, but complex question, like how do you do it right? And so that's why we formed Healthy Wage to kind of figure out how to use money as a, a motivator to, to drive behavior change. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky. I hope you're doing wonderfully well. It's great to have you here. And uh, you know what? It makes all the difference to me knowing that the show is making a difference to you. Now, if you uh, like what you see, make sure you uh, join us again, like, subscribe, and do all of those wonderful things that help us grow the channel. And again, thank you for joining us. Now, speaking of making a great difference to the world, I'm on the line with the wonderful Mr. David Roddenberry. How are you, David? Wonderful. Thanks, Rick. Yes, it's absolutely great to have you here. Now, you and I were just briefly talking about a little bit about your background, but I think it's important just for the sake of content that I share that uh, you are the co-founder of Healthy Wage, and we're going to be talking about Healthy Wage, how it came about, and all of the moving parts inside of it, and how incentivizing health and fitness is changing the weight loss space. But before we do that, Dave, it's customary for us to learn a little bit more about your life. So I'm wondering if we can start by talking a little bit about where you live. Where's home for you? I'm uh, in South Florida, Fair. Fort Lauderdale. Oh, that's a beautiful place, isn't it? Yes. So has that been your home um, long term? or? I, I grew up in Miami. Oh. Um, so I've lived in South Florida for most of my life, uh, and I've spent time away for work and for school, um, but otherwise uh, have lived there the rest. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I, I always like to talk about uh, our, our childhood because this is why I think the My Future Business Show is a little bit different than your standard run-of-the-mill business type podcast. Now, what do you remember about growing up? What's something that really sticks out for you that you could share with us? Oh, I was always an entrepreneur. Um, so we had a mango tree uh, in our backyard and <laughs> um, no one in my family ate mangoes. So I would go to the road i'd collect the mangoes i made signs and you know on the kind of highway near my house of i would course, yes. sell uh sell mangoes in the it was hot i mean you know mangoes ripen in the summer so we're talking 90 degree south florida summers you know, with my little sign in the, you know, no shade, uh, selling mangoes on the side of the road. Oh, I bet you had some fun doing that. Now, um, did you have any hobbies when you were growing up? And, and do you still have hobbies outside of the workplace? Yeah. So I uh, swam um, competitively and I also uh, played piano. Oh, very good. And now uh, you're a good swimmer. Are you a strong swimmer? Uh, yeah, I, I'm a distance swimmer. Oh, wow. Um, so I did both the I am. Uh, as well as the longer distances. So tell us a little bit about that. Does that sort of help? Because um, I often find a connection between um, somebody's sports abilities and their success in business. Do you do you lean on any of your disciplines that you've uh, learned from being a, a long distance swimmer? Uh, well, I think it. You know, there's a lot of discipline um, that goes into um, long distance swimming. You have to put in a lot of hours to build up the muscle memory, um, to be successful in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and then you're balancing school uh, and other activities around that. So I, I do think that, you know, helps you with time management. Um, also a lot of time to think yeah. uh, when you're, <laughs> you're just staring at a, uh, a lot of black line in the pool. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, um, in terms of, uh, you know, discipline and, and you mentioned basically uh, your daily routine, what does that look like? Are you an early riser? I am an early riser. Yeah, I love the mornings. Uh, it's where I can get the most things done. So I like to get up before my family and get some things done personally and then spend time with them uh, before heading to work. Yeah, I love this. This is a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Now, I'm a, I'm a music lover, uh, David. How about yourself? Do you enjoy music? Absolutely. What type of music do you like? Um, I'm mostly uh, top 40. Top 40, uh, country. yeah. Uh, excellent, excellent. Is that the type that you play on the piano? Uh, no. So I was classically trained oh, wow. um, on the piano. That takes a special type of commitment. That would have taken you years. Yes, yes. I started very early and I played, you know, through college. It makes me wonder because I often hear stories about uh, pianists who have become very successful, just like sports stars that, you know, their parents um, were, I guess, a motivating force behind their success. Did you have somebody like that behind you sort of, you know, pointing you in the in that direction or is that something yes, you naturally want to do? 
without a doubt. So um, both of my parents um, are attorneys, but their parents were entrepreneurs. Uh, and I think it, it maybe it skips a generation. And so yes. I have seen both kind of views, um, you know, the salary, um, but, you know, well compensated, you know, looking out for my children, um, which I'm the beneficiary of, of my parents. Mm -hmm. And I also saw the more risk taking, um, you know, flexible lifestyle, um, free spirit um, of, of my grandparents. So I, I got to see both worlds. Yeah, that's wonderful. Do you like, uh, do you commit to ongoing education? Do you read or do you, do you find that important in your life? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, th I, you know, I think so much of success, you have to constantly be innovating and you're not going to innovate without exposure, a broad, broad swath. And so constantly keeping your eyes open, whether that's through books um, or, um, you know, conferences um, or, you know, bringing in fresh talent, um, you know, makes all the difference in, in terms of maintaining your, your success and your advantage. Are you a, like a hard book type of uh, reader or do you like audible? Do you like audio books? Which one no, you... I'm a, a old, old, totally old, old school. school. I, love so it. <laughs> I, I don't even like to read on the iPad. I like to have a, a, a book in front of me. There's something to be said about the power of the pen, isn't there? Picking up a power of mm -hmm. a pen. Do you do you still, uh, no, going on from that, picking up a book is one thing, but when you um, have your best ideas, how do you like to capture them? Do you like to physically write with a pen? How does, and how do Absolutely. your ideas come about? Yeah, there's definitely muscle memory to kind of writing and, and forcing yourself to articulate. Um, so I would say two two things, um, you know, the written and just, just kind of capturing notes and ideas. And then when you're kind of putting it together, forcing yourself to be disciplined, to yep. write and explain yep. um, and and poke holes. You know, when you have to kind of write it out, you you push yourself in a way that it's often easy. Uh, it, not that we're intentionally lazy, but, you know, talking it through can be a little intellectually uh, lazy yeah. um, and you're relying on other people to help you to refine your ideas but when you're writing it out you're really kind of pulling yourself to task well thank you very much for having your thoughts to us it's very important to get some context about your life and and the likes now i did my research and i watched a very early video of you working your magic in terms of trying to develop the healthy wage idea do you recall a vimeo video that you stood up in front of everybody and you were asking for ideas about the platform and how did you feel about the risk that you were taking at that time it's a long um, time ago that video. I remember. Yes, it. yes. Um, you know, I um, in one hand it felt risky, and then another it, it didn't mm. um, because I, I maybe it's that entrepreneurial. You know, you're younger and you're naive. Yep. Uh, but you just have complete confidence that if you keep pushing at something, you're going to make it work. Um, and you also have a an unwillingness, often irrational, to to not stop. And so I, you know, I, I, I didn't really feel, um, feel like uh, too risky. Um, and, and for context, I, um, I was working at a hedge fund in New York right. um, and, and 2007, uh, 2008. And then when the financial crisis happened, I was helping them start new businesses. There was no, of course, no excess capital. And so there were no new businesses for them to start anymore. And so I left the hedge fund and there weren't a ton of opportunities at that time. Um, and so... The opportunity cost was low, my self-confidence was high, and so it didn't feel, uh, it wasn't like I was at that moment turning down a, a highly lucrative financial sector opportunity. It was it was one of those things where I, um, you know, I could have pursued something like that, but there weren't as many jobs available. Capital was very tight at that moment, and so I uh, it took the time to, to work on the business. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I, I listened to this and I think to myself, you clearly have a very strong mindset. Has that been something that's been with you because of all of the things you've gone through in your life? Or do you have you had days where you've gone, you know what, this is tough. And, and if you did, how did you manage those days? You know, the more successful you get, the more you get those kind of feelings. It's <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah. In that respect, because you you see how much success you could be having and then you you know you're falling short relative to that um and so you know you you it's it's easier and easier to set loftier goals um 
And, um, and so managing through that is, you know, just perspective. Um, I think that's where exercise and, uh, you know, taking care of yourself helps and, and reading a good book and just reflecting, um, you know, to help you reset your um, expectations. Because, you know, life throws you curves like the pandemic. <laughs> oh, yes. You can't an- anticipate, you know, and so you have to just kind of roll with it and then reset your goals and, um, and then just double down, um, you know, with new new goals and new plans and new strategies to, to accomplish them. Now, I'd love to talk about how this has affected you, the pandemic, because it certainly touched us globally and uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, budging um, very quickly at the moment, at least where we are. Um, but for context, could you actually share your professional background so that we have an understanding? Um, well, so uh, before starting Healthy Wage, I, um, I studied, uh, I have a master's in health policy um, at the London School of Economics um, and an MBA um, from Oxford and, um, and a law degree from Harvard. Um, and so I was working in finance, um, hel- helping them start new businesses, um, things like reinsurance and real estate and uh, market making and kind of a, a, a really a, a range of new businesses. Uh, it was a very large fund that had a lot of capital and, um, and you know, started, uh, kind of had my pulse on, on the research around um, public health yep. um, because, you know, I, I had studied it. And o- obesity in the U.S. is by far, prior to COVID, our, our largest public health challenge. Mm. And, and, you know, it's such a complex question. I think everyone would, would love to have a pill that would solve it, but, but we don't. And so we're, we're talking about behavioral change strategies, and that's very, very, very hard in the obesogenic environment that we live in. Um, and so... Um, you know, there's research that shows the efficacy of financial incentives. I yep. uh, saw the research, thought really, really cool idea, but complex question, like, how do you do it right? And so that's why we formed um, Healthy Wage to kind of figure out how to use money as a, a motivator to, to drive behavior change. I wonder, is uh, given the long term nature of a commitment to something like this, uh, which we'll talk about in some depth, um, beyond the money incentives, when somebody sees results, and I've read some of the results and they look fantastic from people that have provided their feedback, do they keep going? Do they maintain uh, yes. their weight? Yes. Yeah, so we, um, you know, it's something that we're constantly trying to work around um you know the consumer always insists that she she or he wants a maintenance program Mm -hmm. um and then when you you know you invest the technology um and you develop a maintenance program and you ask them to pay for it the engagement is much much less um than on weight loss um and so we have free programs now so you know every paid maintenance program that we've tried has just not had the kind of uptake that we were hoping for so we have a free a group and we we offer a weekly incentive of a hundred dollars just for keeping your weight off so everyone who wins a challenge can kind of enter this group and then all they have to do is um, be in the group and we randomly select the member and if you've kept your weight off you get a hundred bucks and so we're you know we're trying um, incentive strategies to help people keep the weight off and then of course the community aspect is very powerful they form a lot of friendships um, as they're going through their journeys on healthy wage and and so that's very motivating to a lot of people um and then of course educational content and and resources that we provide um for participants like uh, we have a partnership with jillian michaels from Mm -hmm. the biggest loser in the us and so we have content to help them keep the weight off as well um but it's it's a it's a tricky question because you know as soon as you hit your goal the weight becomes less of a priority and then yes for a lot of people, it, it, it sneaks back on. Now, I wonder, you know, you've touched on community, therefore you're hanging around, as it were, are the right type of people who are on a very similar goal, which is critically important, I would suspect, to this. But also, what is your take on exposing oneself to the media and, you know, this uh, advertising of foodstuffs and making healthy choices? That would obviously be a, another massive dimension to this. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the food complex uh, is very uh, powerful in the U.S. I mean, we're bombarded with messages, and uh, you know, they're they're very good at innovating and developing um, tastier and tastier treats. Um, and oftentimes, <laughs> that means more butter and more sugar, sugar. and um, and so the the foods that we're eating are not very um, good for you, and um, and so it's very hard and. The portion sizes are very high and 
Um, and so it's, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of social factors um, that go into, you know, obesity, obviously a very complex problem. Um, however, um, that's not to say um, that I don't believe in individual accountability and responsibility mm. and that you can't control what you eat. And so, you know, we're, we're there trying to empower you to make the best decisions available for you in, in spite of kind of the larger social forces that we're all um, dealing with. Thank you very much for sharing. I'd love to talk a little bit about the psychology behind this and why it is so effective. And uh, following on from that, if you don't mind, David, if you could talk to us about um, what gamification is for those who don't understand what that is. Sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, a couple of principles underlie um, uh, the design of our programs. They're all grounded in behavioral economics. So there's loss aversion, mm -hmm. and that's the tendency to be more motivated by losing something than winning something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have to pay me $10, um, you know, if you don't, uh, if I don't do something, you're more motivated to, to do it than if I say, oh, I'll pay you $10. And so the, the, the threat of losing, taking money out of your own pocket is, uh, is more motivating for, for many folks. Oh, I see how um, it works. Yep. There's a, another principle called the lottery effect, um, which is similar to the power of a large prize. When there's a big prize out there, it can distort our thinking. Um, so, you know, you know, if you even even if it, even if your likelihood of winning it isn't very high, having the big prize out there can can alter your trajectory and kind of, I guess, cause you to rethink um, what you're doing and, um, and make positive uh, change. Um, and then there's a, a lot of literature on, on social connectedness. Um, you know, it's not just what your friends are doing. It's what your friends of friends are doing mm -hmm. that influence your health habits, you know, with respect to smoking cessation, um, as well as uh, weight gain. Um, and so we're, you know, we're trying to apply all of those um, uh, principles. Um, and, and the gamification idea is just making it fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of that fun theory. How can we make it you know getting healthy something that you want to do as opposed to something that you have, have to, to do. do yeah um yeah and making it instead of like um a shame there's always often so much unfortunately in society so much shame tied mm. up to weight mm. like let's reorient it and make it exciting rewarding fun yeah absolutely. Um, to, to be getting healthy yeah you're doing a great job thank you very much for for setting it up and um, helping so many people now i know that you are the co-founder of this organization now um given how educated and skilled you are you fill in most of the the necessary criteria for understanding how this system works but who else is involved yeah well my co-founders uh jimmy um and uh, he leads our product and technology so i i don't have any expertise around engineering and you know, we deliver our solution by a website and a mobile app, Healthy Wage. And so he's primarily responsible um, for for those things. Yep. And also he just has a really strong marketing brain as well. So he always comes up with fantastic uh, ways to present the information and get people engaged. Is there a certain um, criteria for getting involved? Or even if I'm feeling fit, can I get involved? Or do I have to be obese? Yeah, what, so what, we, yeah. we have... We have we we do have options for for fit people uh, to participate. So we have like a holiday sweepstakes challenge. It's uh, twelve over twelve thousand dollars, which represents each winner that we had in uh, twenty twenty. Um, and it's all you have to do is maintain your weight. Um, so a lot of people during the holidays, it's a hard time for them. And and so you sign up, you weigh in at the start, you weigh in at the end, and you're entered into the drawing. Um, for the big money, you there's know, no so, cost. There's no way to the, cheat this system, is there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do require video verifications. We want to keep it fair um, for participants. Um, but the other way fit people um, get involved is we do have step challenges, Yep. Um, which a lot of people find motivating. It's about increasing your steps by 25%. So let's say you're already at 10,000 steps a day. Um, your goal would be 12,500 steps a day. If you're at 8,000, your goal is 10,000. So it's a personalized goal, acknowledging that we're all coming from different places. And it, uh, you know, per, uh, looks at your step history and gives you a goal. And if you hit your goal, you know, you get you get cash prizes. Do you have a um, seasonal challenge? Like, do you have a New Year's uh, challenge? Because it seems yes, to me... Yes, New Year is definitely a, <laughs> it's definitely a popular time for people to kind of rethink where they are and, yep. and undertake, um, you know, a, a health journey. 
So um, you obviously would have relationships inside of your community. Tell us about how active the community is, because I think that would be very important in all of this. Yeah, I, we, you know, people who are going through a transformation, um, like a, a larger weight loss uh, endeavor, are, are very uh, communicative, and they they lean for support on the other participants, and it's very motivating um, seeing the stories and the pictures, um, memes that they're posting. Um, so it's uh, you know, so much of social media has become toxic, and this is the opposite. It's a a powerful and, and positive community. Um, they're kind of, you know, strangers um, supporting you globally, yeah. you know, going through these health journeys together. Now, I wonder, I, I saw a calculator on your site. Can you talk us through that? What's that about? How do you use that? Yeah, so we, well, we personalize our challenges for each participant, um, which is kind of neat. Um, and so, you know, we, you tell us a little information about yourself, like how much you weigh and how many pounds you want to lose. Um, and, you know, a little bit about why you're losing weight and what strategy you're going to do. And then our calculator tells you how much we'll pay you. Um, and the minimum amount of time is six months and the minimum weight loss is 10%. So this is not for the fit people. This is for people who are looking to embark on a, a lifestyle change, uh, lose a minimum of 10% of their weight. And, um, and they'll get a, a personalized prize. And of course, the bigger your goal, the bigger your prize. Um, but but it's going to be relevant and, and personalized to you so that, you know, it meets your budget, meets your um, goals. And, and we're like the incentive piece partnering with you as you embark on this lifestyle change journey. That's wonderful. I, I often talk about where names came from and who decided on the names and how long it took to decide on the name. Where did it come from? Who decided it? And how long did it take? Oh, yeah. So my co-founder and I um uh debated oh uh, for about a month yeah, wow. um and um we we wanted the the business to be about health incentives and we liked the so we called it healthy wage um yep. and we liked it because if you added the r um you could have that um financial like betting component to it healthy right. wager yeah and so so it had both like healthy wage and healthy wager um, if for those who are who are going to uh, interchangeable kind of... almost yes right exactly now, and then it's been I would say uh, you know advice for future entrepreneurs I, I think the name needs to be maybe less relevant um, to the the business that you're in. in in many respects you know sometimes people are like oh is it about you know payroll you know because yes. it's a wage yes. you know and, and minimum wage and a living wage and things like that. And, you know, uh, other companies, you know, pick names like Orange or Bicycle. And you can <laughs> own you can own the brand in that respect within that space. Mm -hmm. And you're not bombarded with, you know, healthy is such a, um, can be a trite word. Yes. Um, and so I, I, hindsight being 2020, we might have uh, called the company something different. Um, but at the time, you know, we really wanted to communicate health incentives. And we liked that uh, wagering uh, or betting component because um, we, we, you know, that was a, kind of the vision for the, yeah. the way so, that the company would evolve. When did you um, start this wonderful organization, and when did it? Uh, when did when did you notice that it started to take off? Yeah, so we launched at um, at TechCrunch, um, uh, one of their conferences, um, in two thousand nine, mm -hmm. so twelve years ago. Um, and we initially were going to be direct consumer um, with a. Uh, an offering, um, a, you know, where you could uh, get a free challenge um, that would pay you money. And then you also had the opportunity to wager and win more money. And we found that there's a couple of hurdles uh, that were very hard to overcome without a lot of capital in that the consumer is pretty skeptical um, about free money. Yeah. Um, and uh, she's also been burned in weight loss. And so, you know, her willingness to kind of try new things uh, requires maybe more marketing dollars on the consumer marketing front than we were willing to invest, where we bootstrapped the company. Yeah. And so we evolved the company into a business-to-business -business solution where we powered challenges for large companies. And that, you know, took off pretty quickly once we, once we went down that route. Um, there was a, a niche or a need. Um, for from corporate uh, benefits managers in the U.S. Um, for solutions that would engage their population and deliver meaningful health improvement. 
And mm -hmm. so we, we did the business to business for about four years. And we worked with many of the biggest companies and continue to like GE and Johnson and Johnson and CES mm -hmm. health and, and many others. And, um, and, and with the capital that we uh, accumulated by, by running the business to business solution, we reinvested into marketing and then, and then brought a business to consumer. And so now it's now 85, 90% business to consumer, even though the business to business continues yeah. and is, you know, a healthy, uh, growing business, it's a, uh, uh, not no longer a, kind of a meaningful part of the, 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 larger the equation. I, I look yeah. at the success stories and you're, you're, you're essentially transforming lives from sedentary almost um, to actively engaged, looking great. Tell us a little bit about some of the success stories that you've had. Oh, well, that's by far the most meaningful thing that we do. And that's what gets us all jazzed up mm. to work in the morning. And that, you know, people have embarked on these lifestyle journeys and the structure, a support and accountability that Healthy Wage is providing to them is really what helps them stick with it and and accomplish their goals. And so, you know, we, I, I get fortunate in that I talk to a, a winner or two every month um, and really get to interview them and learn about their experience and um, you know, the confidence that they have, the positive attitude, um, and the life change that they experienced without the excess weight is, um, it's overwhelming. I mean, you know, I, I think we all know that there are health benefits to losing weight. Mm. Um, but in, and when you talk to someone who's actually accomplished it, um, and, you know, and now they're telling you about all the things they can do that they couldn't do before in their day-to-day -day life. Um, like not get winded going upstairs or chase their children around um, and the meaningful health improvement with respect to diabetes medications, heart, um, blood pressure, musculoskeletal issues, mortality, back pain, yeah. Mort well, of course, mortality, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, cancer, uh, you know, 30 years ago smoking. And, and I mm. think, you know, there's a people kind of acknowledge it, but not fully, you know, the, the impact that weight's had on cancer. Uh, rates in the in the US it's really scary absolutely um, we we touched on earlier David and if I don't if you don't mind I'd love to go back to it is uh, how the uh, pandemic has impacted society and business and I'm wondering how has there been a take up of the business because of this and getting involved so it's been a roller coaster mm. um so right when the pandemic happened um in the US in March of, uh, of last year there was Kind of a retrenchment um but it lasted just a few weeks i mean it was really short um so march um and then into mid-april um were slow and then it like roared back um you know with, with numbers that were kind of reminiscent of new year i think a lot of people you know hadn't taken care of themselves during that you know first initial four to six weeks mm. um and there was a real focus on on health improvement um, that that continued. Um, and then I would say this year has been a little more mixed. Um, the business to business um, side of the company was very, very slow. Um, last year, companies were focusing on immediate concerns. Um, and but now that's doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, and the consumer side has been a little slower um, for the last few months, um, I think, uh, but it, but starting to pick up again. So it, it's it's definitely changed consumer behavior. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think the longer term impact is still um, kind of un, un, unclear. Unknown. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wonder um, if you look at the app and I think to myself, you've got online communities now and most of what we're doing at the moment, at least, is online. What are your aspirations for the business? Is it a global uh -huh. entity or is it just national at the moment? Yes. No, absolutely. It's uh, it's global um, aspirations. I mean, you know, it's everyone can benefit who, who struggles with their weight um, by having uh, an incentive. It, it, there's no reason why you should be undertaking a, a health improvement journey without an incentive. Mm -hmm. And so we want to kind of be leading that, um, you know, globally. Um, uh, in terms of the evolution of the, the business itself, um, you know, we have really struggled with making sure that we're providing meaningful mm -hmm. support for participants. Um, so there's so much great content on the internet um, that to provide more kind of me too content didn't really make sense to us. Um, and so we have that partnership with Jillian Michaels where she provides fitness videos, fitness 
uh, nutrition uh, content to our participants so that we have, you know, a global expert that people can take advantage of rather than, you know, building everything um, in-house ourselves, um, you know, given that, you know, our focus is on behavioral economics and not, you know, nutrition. Um, and so that's kind of been our approach or our strategy, um, you know, and, and I think we uh, struggle or one of the tensions is, you know, do we double down on one approach or do we present our participants with a myriad of approaches? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and how prescriptive do people need Should us be. to be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're providing them with the structure, but a lot of people need to know what am I going to do today? Yeah, um, what's and next? so, yeah, exactly. And so do we play in that space or do we kind of sit on top as a meta solution? And I, I think that's a tension that we've struggled with for a few years. And, yep. and that's, like, uh... where we, it's a commitment, isn't it? It's something that you've clearly focused on. Now, I, I wonder, uh, David, when people are listening into this and they're saying, you know, I want to get involved, um, what is the onboarding process and, and how do they get access to this app and how do they use it and what's the process? Yeah, really easy. Just go to Healthy Wage. Um, on the app's called Healthy Wage. And, um, you know, we have a myriad of challenges. Again, our most popular challenge is our healthy wager. That's where you take a personal bet, the six month minimum, 10% weight loss minimum, and you can win up to 10 grand uh, US. And so that a lot of people like because it's totally in their control. They're setting the terms, they hit their goal, they get a guaranteed prize. Um, other people prefer to compete against others. You know, they like team based initiatives. Um, they like a co more competitive where I win if I uh, cash prizes, if I beat other people. Um, and then we also have, you know, free things like our sweepstakes with, you know, 12,000 US um, guaranteed prize to someone, you know, just for maintaining their weight. So there's really a range of challenges to kind of motivate you and uh, help you stay engaged. And you can do multiple or, or you can just check out what we have at, at Healthy Wage or the app called Healthy Wage. Fantastic. Well, look, um, if you're on this call and you're interested in what we've been talking about today, all you need to do is make your way over to healthywage.com. That's one word, healthywage.com. And with all that being said, David, what a wonderful call. What an opening to a great platform that is making so much of a positive difference in people's lives. Thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.